Welcome to the X Project podcast. This is a podcast of the X Project Substack. To subscribe, please go to the X Project dot substack dot com. The rising tide of global liquidity lifting all assets. Michael Howell's powerful analysis and provocative forecast. Article number 35. Published February 18th, 2024. First, a note for podcast listeners. This article contains a number of important charts and graphs. If you are not driving, you may want to open the article to scroll through to the charts to view while you listen. Again, only if it is safe for you to do so. Secondly, I apologize for the delay in publishing this podcast as I was traveling on a family vacation without my home office setup and have just returned. In this article, the X Project will answer these questions. Why this article now? Who is Michael Howe? Where is this perspective coming from? What are the top five takeaways from this perspective? What does the X Project guy have to say? And as always, why should you care? Reminder for readers and listeners, Nothing the X Project writes or says should be considered investment advice or recommendations to buy or sell securities or investment products. Everything everything written and said is for informational purposes only, and you should do your own research and due diligence. It would be best to discuss with an investment advisor before making any investments or changes to your investments based on any information provided by the X Project. Section one, why this article now? Three weeks ago, I published Forecasting the Economic Storm, Dr. Lacey Hunt's Dire Predictions for a Hard Landing in 2024 and Beyond, article number 29. Meanwhile, the stock market continued to power to new all-time highs. Last week, I started writing an article on some non-consensus views on why the stock market may continue rising and why the economy may avoid a recession. But with the stock market continuing its relentless march higher to another new all-time high, I instead published Market Rules to Remember. Bob Farrell's Legacy Applied to Today's Markets, Article Number 33. And then, last week, we received a hotter-than-expected inflation report, which caused one sharp down day. But the stock market has rebounded and is still within 1% of its all-time high. So, it's time to give credit where credit is due, and cover one of the people who not only correctly called this recent move higher, but has been calling the markets correctly for a long time. Section two, who is Michael Howell? Michael Howell is the CEO of Cross Border Capital a London-based FCA-registered independent research and investment company that he founded in 1996. Howell developed the quantitative liquidity research methodology while he was research director at Solomon Brothers from 1986. He was subsequently appointed head of research at Bering Securities in 1992. He was the top-ranked emerging market strategist by institutional investors for three years prior to setting up cross-border capital. Howell has worked in financial markets since 1981 
and is a regular international conference speaker. He is a qualified U.S. supervisory analyst and has a doctorate in economics. Hal is also the author of the Substack, Capital Wars, the book Investing in Emerging Markets, published in 1995, and the book Capital Wars, published in 2020, which is on my reading list for 2024. Section 3. Where is his perspective coming from? Michael Howe appear, appeared as a guest on three YouTube channels in the past two months, where he was interviewed for over an hour on each. Debt, the first being debt monetization is coming, hard assets are the hedge. On February 12th, 2024, which had received at the time of this publication, 6,528 views. The second interview titled Surge in Fed Liquidity is Fueling Bull Market in Stocks, Gold and Crypto, published on January 16th, 2024, with 81,235 views. And the third uh, interview titled Rising Liquidity to Power Markets Higher Through 2025, which premiered on December 24th, 2023, with 77,063 views. Section four, what is the top takeaway from this perspective? Global liquidity as a market driver. Howell posits that global liquidity, the availability of credit and cash flows in the economy is a more significant driver of financial markets than traditionally monitored indicators like interest rates or GDP growth. More to the point, Howell says, global liquidity drives asset prices, which drive the macro economy. This is the opposite of what economic textbooks teach. What has changed that makes the textbooks wrong and Howell correct? Textbooks tell you financial markets exist to raise new money for capital investment. Howell thinks that's, a, that's an old story that doesn't happen very much anymore because there isn't a great deal of capex going on in the mature advanced economies. Instead, what financial markets are doing is trying to refinance the existing huge mountain of 350 plus trillion dollars of global debt. With an average maturity of five years, the world needs to refinance approximately $70 trillion of debt every year. And what is needed to do that is balance sheet capacity. When dealing with refinancing, interest rates matter a whole lot less because the choice is either refinance at the given rate or not. And not refinancing means either paying off the debt, usually not possible, or defaulting, highly undesirable. And so it is balance sheet capacity, particularly among financial intermediaries that Howell calls liquidity. He argues that the influx, influx of liquidity driven by central bank policies and cross-border capital flows directly influences asset prices by increasing the purchasing power available in the market. This perspective shifts the focus toward understanding the dynamics of cash flow and its impact on investment, highlighting how excess liquidity often leads to asset bubbles. At the same time, Scarcity can precipitate market corrections or crashes. 
Section 5. What is another top takeaway? Debt monetization and inflation. The process of debt monetization, where central banks purchase government debt, effectively funding government spending by increasing the money supply, is a focal point of Howell's analysis. He suggests that this approach, while offering a short-term solution to fiscal deficits, poses long-term inflationary risks. As more money chases the same amount of goods and services, the value of money diminishes, leading to inflation. Howell underscores the importance of monitoring such policies as they can erode purchasing power and savings, advocating for investment in tangible assets as a hedge against potential inflationary pressures. Section six, what is a third takeaway? The role of central banks. Central banks' strategies in managing liquidity levels are critical in Howell's discussions. He views these institutions not just as lenders of last resort, but as active market participants influencing the direction of global economics, uh, global economies through their policies. By adjusting interest rates, engaging in quantitative easing, or setting reserve requirements, central banks directly impact liquidity levels which in turn affect asset prices and economic growth. Howell's insights suggest that understanding central bank actions can offer predictive insights into market movements, emphasizing the importance of their role in maintaining financial stability. Section seven, what is a fourth takeaway? The impact of liquidity on asset prices. As shown in the two charts above, Howell's analysis illustrates a direct correlation between global liquidity levels and asset prices across various classes, including equities, bonds, and real estate. He explains that as liquidity increases, it leads to higher demand for assets pushing up prices, and conversely, when liquidity tightens, asset prices tend to fall. This liquidity-driven view of asset valuation challenges the conventional wisdom that focuses solely on fundamentals, suggesting that investors must also consider the broader liquidity environment to make informed decisions. Howell created a global liquidity index which is graphed on the following chart and shows that it closely follows a 65 month cycle. He believes the recent cycle low was October, 2022, suggesting the cycle peak will occur in the second half of 2025. This means that asset prices should be supported by rising liquidity until then. Section eight. What is a fifth takeaway? Emerging markets and global liquidity flows. Finally, Howell delves into the relationship between global liquidity and its impact on emerging markets. He observes that these markets are particularly sensitive to changes in global liquidity conditions with inflows leading to economic expansions but also exposing these economies to risks of overheating and subsequent corrections. His analysis suggests that while liquidity surges can foster growth and investment opportunities in emerging markets, they also require careful monitoring to avoid the pitfalls of rapid capital outflows, which can destabilize economies. Section nine. What does the X Project guy have to say? First, I want to thank all subscribers, primarily free and some paid, who have signed up thus far. 
Gaining additional subscribers daily at this point is a strong vote of confidence propelling the X project forward. Substack tells me that nearly two thirds of you have a four star or five star activity rating, meaning you consistently engage with my content, which is excellent. Please hit the heart icon indicating you like the article. The more likes I get, the more Substack will promote my content within the Substack community. If you don't like my content or have any suggestions, please email me at the X Project guy at gmail.com. Second, I want to point out that I consider Howell's view to be non-consensus. Most people and most analysts believe that liquidity is being constrained by the Fed's high interest rates and its stated determination to keep interest rates higher for longer. There are a few analysts who point out the easing of financial conditions or an increased level of liquidity. Still, they cite different measures that are less comprehensive than Howell's and do not have a strong historical correlation with his global liquidity index. If everyone started expecting higher global liquidity to lead to higher asset prices, then I would be invoking Bob Farrell's rule number nine. In the next section, I will explain why you should care and more importantly, what you can do about it. However, the X project now requires you to view the final section as a paid subscriber. In a few articles, the paywall will move up within the article so that only paid subscribers will see the last two sections, or rather, Free subscribers will only see the first eight sections. I will be moving the paywall up every few weeks, so ultimately free subscribers will only see the first four or five sections of each article. Please consider a paid subscription. All paid subscriptions come with a free 14-day trial, and you can cancel any time. Every month for the cost of just two cups of coffee. The X Project will deliver two articles per week, helping you know in one to two hours of your time per month what you need to know about our changing world at the intersection of commodities, demographics, economics, energy, geopolitics, government debt and deficits, interest rates, markets, and money. You can also earn free paid subscription months by referring your friends. If your referrals sign up for a free subscription, you get one month of free paid subscription for one referral, six months of free paid subscription for three referrals, and 12 months of free paid subscription for five referrals. So please refer your friends. Thank you. This concludes the X Projects podcast number 35. Again, please subscribe to the X Projects Substack at thexproject.substack.com.